Welcome to the Fine Arts at Oxford 2018 podcast. I'm art lover Muffin Whitney, and recently I had the privilege of speaking by phone with marine artist Steve Rogers, this year's Fine Arts at Oxford featured artist. First of all, congratulations on being this year's featured artist at Fine Arts at Oxford. That's quite an honor. How did you find out you were the 2018 featured artist? Well, I, uh, I got an email from the, uh, the show's organizers, and I was very pleasantly surprised. You know, I submitted a couple of pieces, and uh, one of the smaller pieces of, of an osprey pair uh, they really loved, and I was very honored by it. Uh, I have done the show for probably somewhere between 12 and 15 years, and I know most of the artists that are in the show and, and I love their work. I really consider all of the artists at that show to be first-class painters. And so for me to be picked out of that group and made the uh, featured artist of the show is quite an honor. Over the last dozen years or so that you've been part of Fine Arts at Oxford, what has been the most enjoyable part of being part of the event? Well... I love Oxford. I mean, it's just a great town. You know, there, in particular, uh, there's a place down in the docks where you can get really good ice cream, so I always enjoy that. You know, again, as I said before, I, I know most of the artists. The, the art world is, is basically like a small town, and uh, we all know each other and, and respect each other's work, and it's just a lot of fun to be with, you know, my fellow artists and and talk about shows and and look at each other's work and there's a big social aspect to it in addition to the business side. Well you spend a lot of time in Oxford, you live in Lewis, Delaware, but how and where did you grow up that fostered such a love of boats and the sea? It's counterintuitive but I grew up in the middle of Chester County, Pennsylvania, on a farm. You know, as far as I could see in every direction was was farm. So it was not something that I looked at every day. Um, My family was not wealthy, but we could generally do a one-week vacation every year. And my parents always took us down to the Jersey Shore. That just fascinated me because it was so different from where I grew up. So as soon as you got fairly close to Ocean City, you would start to see... You know, the estuaries, wrecked boats, and and things like that, the marinas. I always was, you know, thrilled with that kind of stuff. And you walk on the beach, we walk on the shores of the bay. It's just something I really enjoyed. Had you begun painting at that point when you were a child going to the shore? I have all my life drawn, painted, sketched, ever, ever since I was old enough to hold a pencil. You had experience with your early drawings and presenting them to your mother. She was your first critic, I take it. Yeah, she she encouraged me, and and that's something. If you if you have a child and you see some art talent, encourage it and see where it goes. Uh, I was always encouraged with my painting. You know, I would draw something and I would take it to my mom and show her, and she would say, "Oh, that's wonderful," you know, and then. Of course, because I love getting compliments from my mother, I would run back and draw something else again and then take it, show it to her. Uh, I think that that was a big part of my loving art and continuing to do it. I mean, I have done other things in my life for regular work. When I was like 18 and it was time to look into going to college, you know, my parents were World War II depression types. They had been through that. And so the big question was, should I go to art school or should I go to regular college? Well, I can tell you that their, their view on it was that I should absolutely go to regular college and have a regular job because they didn't really see art as something that would be, you know, a productive career. You know, I was 18. I, I didn't have any motivation one way or the other. I was just glad to get out the door. So uh, I went to a great college up in Lancaster, took a degree in anthropology, got decent jobs after that. I was in the service for a while. And uh, then I did store planning and decor design for a while. Uh, But I never stopped painting. But it would just be painting here and there, and i just stick with it. And after a while, I started doing ship models. Uh, If if something I was interested in, I would you know, try to build a model of it, and, and the first models were terrible. They really were. But my family loved them. 
Well, you're noted these days for being both a model maker and a painter. Did you begin model making first or painting? The drawing and the painting first. Uh, when I was I think 10 or 11, I, I built a small ship model. It was, it was just a rowboat it was out of toothpicks. And I was so proud of it. I painted it yellow inside and green outside. And the truth is, it was pretty terrible. Uh, and then my brother crushed it and uh, <laughs> wanted to kill him, but my parents wouldn't let me, of course. Does that model making experience contribute to the wonderful completeness that the boats in your paintings have? I think it does because of, of what you do as a model builder and an artist. Uh, I specialize in, or I paint mostly because I love working boats. And uh, I don't paint fully rigged warships or Navy ships or stuff like that. Uh, I like small work boats. But the nice thing about small work boats is you can end up talking to the guy that owns it. And, and I do that a lot. You know, I'll get in the truck and, and drive down to Maryland's Eastern Shore and out some road and, and see uh, a dock and a waterman and a boat. And, and I'll go over and talk to him and ask if I can take a picture of the boat and stuff like that. And they, they always say, sure, you know, get to talk with these people. And, and they're, they're wonderful people. They really are. And uh, they show you things and how they do things. And, and they're thrilled that somebody has some interest. But these are the kinds of things that artists do, you know, talk with people, take pictures. And all of that ends up somewhere in the paintings. Now, most of your paintings, especially the boat ones, are in acrylic. What is it about acrylic rather than some other medium that is perfect for your work? Well, one of the things I like about acrylic is that it dries fast. And because it dries fast, it enables me to use a technique called glazing, which is something the old masters used. The difference is they would paint in oil, and they would have to wait weeks to be able to go over something they painted with transparent color and that's what glazing is what you would do is simply paint something you know a winch or a, or a bracket on a seat and you would paint it in a pale gray and then you would mix up transparent color and go back and paint over that and that would be the color that you actually want it to be and the reason it works so well is because light penetrates through the, the transparent color bounces off the base underneath and then comes back out. And it makes things really pop. But you do also paint with oil. I have painted with oils. I don't think I'm as good with them as I am with the acrylics. But uh, one of the reasons I do paint with oils is to get out in the field and do plein air competitions and loosen up. Uh, my work, you know, I have a habit of being pretty tight in my work. You know, if you've looked at it, you've seen you know, very, you know, precise paintings of engines and winches and rigging and stuff like that. I love the Impressionists. It's, it's one of my favorite schools, uh, but I am not one. But I'm trying to learn how to paint like they paint. And uh, painting in oil and going to plein air competitions helps me work in that direction. You know, someday you might see an oil painting from me. Your landscapes are very beautiful, and your paintings with things other than boats, you've, you've painted churches and storefronts and houses and locomotives, and they all seem to tell a wonderful story, but there's just something magical about your boat paintings and how the boats just seem to illuminate from the canvas. And I assume that part of that is the glazing technique you've discussed. And when you do a painting with a boat, do you paint the boat first and then the background, or do you do the background first? Well, I, I try to do uh, all of it at the, at the same rate. Uh, what an artist, most artists do this, I think, uh, what I do is, is I'll have a whole group of photographs of the boat I want to paint, and I'll place them over my easel and look at them, and then between all the views I have, then that's what I'll use to develop my composition. Uh, once I have my composition, it'll have everything in it. It'll have you know, the boat and the background and foreground details and stuff like that. And then I'll seal that with workable fixatives. I kind of block out where the boat's going to be. And then I'll start with 
the far background, you know, the, the, the landscapes behind the boat. And I'll paint them first, and then, then I'll paint the boat, then I'll paint the landscape of grasses or mudflats, water is in front of the boat. Uh, but then, you know, I'll go back, because essentially the boat will be where it's going to be, uh, the composition will be basically the, what, what I want, and I'll start to add details to the boat. Uh, generally, the boat is the last part of the painting that I finish. Uh, but that's when I do the glazing. That's when I add all the rust and the wear and tear and the chip paint. All the things that make your paintings so complete and give such an incredible character and personality to the boats in your painting. Is, is there any particular type of boat or any particular boat that's on your wish list and that you have yet to paint? Right now, one of the boats I have not had an opportunity to paint is called an Eastern Brig Dragger. And they're, they're big fishing boats to go out into the North Atlantic and trawl for, for fish. They're impressive. They're, they're big. They're uh, covered with gear. And of course, I love that kind of stuff. If you're in a bad storm, that's the boat you want to be in because they're specifically designed for that. So they're interesting. The winches on the deck, the, the rigging and the masts and the booms and the uh, auto boards and the nets and all the gear that goes with it are just the kind of things I like to paint. And I haven't had a shot at one yet. I'll probably have to take a trip up to New England or, or up to Maine and, and find a couple and, and take some pictures. Well, that going to Maine over this summer would not be the worst thing to do. And perhaps for 2019, we will see a picture, a painting of yours of one of those trawlers. Thank you so much for this. It's been very enlightening and very delightful to talk to you about your wonderful art. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed it. Make sure to come see Steve Rogers' wonderful art at this year's Fine Arts at Oxford. The event will be held at the Oxford Community Center 200 Oxford Road in Oxford on Maryland's enchanting eastern shore. The event begins on Friday, May 18th with the preview party and continues through the weekend with Saturday and Sunday's exhibit. For more information, go to the Oxford Community Center's website at oxfordcc.org. For more information on marine artist Steve Rogers, go to his website at marineartbystevegrogers.com. This is Muffin Whitney for the Fine Arts at Oxford podcast, and I'll see you May 18th through the 20th at the Oxford Community Center for this year's Fine Arts at Oxford.